All right. Good evening, everyone. It is six o'clock. I will call the 14th regular Common Council meeting to order. Will the clerk state the quote of the evening? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Happiness is an inside job. All right. Will the clerk call the roll? Alderperson Ackley. Here. Alderperson Decker. Here. Alderperson Feldy. Excused. Alderperson Felicki Paneski. Here. Alderperson Heideman. Here. Alderperson Mitchell. Here. Alderperson Perella. Here. Alderperson Ramey. Here. Alderperson Rust. Present. Alderperson Salazar. Here. There are nine present. All right. Thank you. Next, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, item number three is approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alder Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the minutes from the 13th regular council meeting held on October 2nd, 2023. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on the previous minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes, state aye. 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 Any objection? Minutes are approved. Next is mayoral appointments, city attorney. Mayor has uh, two appointments for your confirmation, uh, Melissa Parra and Aubrey Lockwood to be considered for appointment to the Mayor's International Committee. Thank you, and those will lay over. City Clerk, anyone for a public forum this evening? No one this evening. Thank you. All right, uh, just one, one item of recognition for tonight uh, for Mayor's announcements. I'll keep it brief um, since we will be going in discussing our capital improvements budget. Um, I just want to recognize uh, that uh, one of our uh, uh, firefighters Tyler Meyer uh, passed away uh, a few days ago and his services for his funeral uh, were yesterday. Um, Tyler's been with the fire department uh, since December of 2007 um, and this would have been his 16th year as uh, a member of the, the, the city fire department as well. So our thoughts and prayers are with him and his family as well as uh, the men and women that worked alongside of him uh, in the fire department as well too. So I just wanted to recognize his services um, that he gave to the city and I'll call on Chief uh, Montiano um, for additional comments as well. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you for the support. Uh, it was it hit the uh, crews pretty hard, but uh, Tyler was one of those individuals that n nobody ever had anything bad to say about him. He was just one of those guys that uh, would, uh, you know, make you smile and laugh no matter what, what he did. You could not be mad at that individual and he truly would give you the shirt off his back. Uh, so he will be sorely missed. Uh, it was a phenomenal service, but I really appreciate the acknowledgement and the support. So thank you. Thank you, Chief. All right. With, with that, uh, we will proceed into our uh, consent agenda, items 8 through 23. Uh, Alder Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file all ROs, receive all RCs, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Moved and seconded. Anyone have any discussion on any of the items in the consent agenda? Alder Flicky Paneski. Thank you. Item number eight. Is this the alley that is north of the Lutheran Church, which is north of the Mead Library? It says that? section 128 of the old plat book, and I don't know what 127 of the original plat book. Chuck, you want to do that? Yes. Or Ryan Sasma? I guess Q either did. One, Chuck. Either one. The answer is yes. The, ans the answer is yes. Okay. Yeah, it's part of the uh, part of an ongoing. I think you saw it, finance and personnel. That there's been some discussion about um, transferring that parking lot, and this is all part of that process and working with the school and church as well as with uh, the theater. Okay. It does not include the north south section of that alley. It does not. Um, I'm not even sure that there actually is a north side, north south portion of that alley anymore. Because when I looked at the map, I only saw east west. Okay. Thank but you. it is only the part that goes east west. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Alder Prella? Yes, yeah, so I had the same question about which one was that because I wasn't able to understand it. And then also, I didn't hear you, City Attorney. I'm sorry for that. Actually, I, I couldn't hear the back and forth. So. 
In addition to understand where that alley is, I also would like to understand what the issue is with that alley. I don't know. I didn't understand so it. So there is an ongoing um, discussion uh, to sell that lot to the church and school. Um, that process, though, is including the theater because the theater has a vested interest. They've got some loading docks back there. But this, this is all part of that, um, of that process. Thank you. Great. Any other discussion on the consent agenda? Alder Flicky Paneski? Thank you very much. Items 16 and 17, and, and they both involve getting new traffic lights at two separate intersections in town. And <clears throat> from what I could gather, the billing went up 65% for one of them and 105% for another. The, the cost without any change in the in the design. So can somebody tell me why we're spending 165% more for two intersections? All right, city engineer queued in. Yes, those extra costs are strictly materials went up that much in two years. The material costs for, for, for the traffic signals and the controllers and everything else, yes. Those, uh, yeah, those those contracts are, are, are ran through the Wisconsin DOT. So, yeah, that's their, that's that's the cost. The nice thing about this program is a, it's a 90, 10, 90 10 split, even with these increases. It's 90% DOT funding or federal funding and 10% city. So the dollar amount we see, it increased from 37 to 62, and then the other one increased from 45 to 93 thousands. Yes. We only pay 10% of the 10%, 93 yep. and 10% of the 62. You got it. That keeps me happier. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> like I said, it's strictly material cost. It's not, it's not labor. It's not design. It's materials. Yeah. All right. Anyone else for items on the consent agenda? All right. Seeing no more cues, uh, this will be a, uh, Alder Flicky Paneski. Thank you. Uh, item 23. It is asking me to vote on licenses already granted. So I have a difficult time voting on something that's already been done, second only to voting on <laughs> suspending rules. So can somebody explain to me why we vote on something that's already been accomplished? You're not. <clears throat> Good. So you are receiving a report of officer that indicates that she has issued those licenses. That's all you're doing. Okay, thank you. All right, any other items on the consent agenda? All right, this will be a roll call vote. Nine eyes. All right, those items are approved. <clears throat> Next, report of officers, item 24, RO number 59, 23, 24, by the city clerk submitting a communication from the Wisconsin Department of Administration regarding the Berkey Company annexation. Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the IRO and file. Moved and seconded. Discussion on this item? Seeing none, this is a voice vote. All those in favor of accepting stay in a filing, state aye. 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 Any objection? All right, that item is approved. Item 25, RO number 612324 by the City Plan Commission. To whom was referred General Ordinance number 242324 by other person Mitchell and RO number 482324 by the City Clerk submitting petition for annexing territory from the Town of Wilson into the City of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the RO, file the application, and adopt the ordinance. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. That item is approved. Item 26, 27, 28, and 29 will be referred to their respective committees. 
Next item 30 is under resolutions, number 78-23-24 by older persons Decker and Russ, authorizing the Director of Engineering and Public Works to grant permission to Lakeshore Cap to temporarily maintain a campsite on property owned and maintained by the city and to maintain a warming fire on such property during an overnight event beginning November 4th. Holder Decker. I ask to suspend the rules. Any objection to suspension? There's been an objection. We will proceed into uh, a voice vote. Any, um, all those in favor of suspending the rules, state aye. Aye. Any objection? All right, in the opinion of the chairs, the ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Uh, Alder Decker, please proceed with your motion. Thank you, Mayor. I move to adopt the resolution. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this resolution? Alder Flicky Paneski. Thank you. I am not so much opposed to doing the activity. I am opposed to the fact that those kinds of things have been planned previously and it could have come to us in a proper time frame, according to my estimation. So that's why I've objected and why I will vote no. All right, thank you. Any other items for discussion on this item? That's kind of weird. Okay, seeing no more cues, uh, this is a roll call vote to approve the, the resolution. Eight ayes, one no. All right, that item is approved. Next item 31, resolution number 792324 by Elder Person Salazar and Feldy, authorizing the Chief of the Police to take necessary actions to receive the 2024 Wisconsin Justice System Improvement Beat Patrol Grant. Uh, Elder Salazar? I ask to suspend the rules. Any objection to suspension? I object. All right, there's been an objection. All those in favor of suspending the rules, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, in the opinion of the chairs, the ayes have it. Uh, Older Salazar, please proceed with your motion. I move to adopt the resolution. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on the resolution? All right, seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Hi, nice. All right, that item is approved. That's Next more, is item 32, resolution number 77 2324 by Elder Person Salazar and Feldy adopting the weights and measures device license schedule fee. Elder Salazar. I ask to suspend the rules. Any objection to suspension? <laughs> I object. All right, there's been an objection. All those in favor of suspending the rules, state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. All right, uh, in the opinion of the chairs, the ayes have it. Elder Salazar, please proceed. I move to adopt the resolution. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Eight ayes, one no. All right, that item is approved. Items 33 through 36 will be referred to the respective committees. Item 37, resolution number 832324 by Older Person Salazar and Feldy, adopting the plan examination and permit fee schedule. Older Salazar? I ask to suspend the rules. Is there any objection to suspension? I object. All right, there's been an objection. All those in favor of suspending the rules, state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? In opinion of the chair, the Eyes have it. Any discussion on oh, Elder Salazar? Please proceed with your motion. Uh, I move to adopt the resolution. Is there a second? Is there a second? Okay, there's been a second. Any discussion? Dean. Alder Heideman. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm wondering uh, on the agenda, it says it's being referred to allowing licensing. What is the reason for suspending the rules? Uh, or, and why, do we, why are we acting on it now? Director McGinnis Casey, you want to answer that? 
Sure. So um, this has been in the works for, staff has been working on this for about a year. The plan initially was to bring forward the whole chapter with the, the fee schedule changes. It was that the direction of legal that we move forward with the fees. And so the reason it's coming to you at this point is because if we hold it over, we won't have capacity to process all the applications before the end of the years and we'd be in a position to charge people application fees on top of their, instead of the renewal fees. And so it's strictly a capacity issue at this point. Thank you. Alder Mitchell. Thank you, asked and answered. All right, thank you. All right, any other discussion on this item? All right, seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. That's approved. All right, reports of committees, 38, RC number 101-2324 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 64-2324 by older persons Mitchell and Flicky Paneski authorizing certain changes to the city's medical benefit plan and dental plan effective the calendar year of 2024 coverage and established the monthly premium equivalent rate rates effective January 2024 20, coverage and thereafter. Older Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Alder Flicky Paneski. Thank you. This came before finance and personnel, and the dollar amounts are the same as last year. So I'd like to congratulate our, our staff and everybody in the city for staying healthy. <laughs> here, here. Any other discussion on this item? All right, this is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. That's approved. Item 39. RC number 106-2324 by the Finance Personnel Committee to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 74-2324 by older persons Mitchell and Flicky Paneski, authorizing the issuance for a refund for the excess, excuse me, property tax payable to Harbor Pride LLC related to 2022 real estate tax or parcel number um, 59-28-18-35-11-5-P. Elder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. That's approved. Item 40. RC number 107-2324 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 75-2324 by older persons Mitchell and Flicky Paneski authorizing the issuance of a refund for excess property tax payable to JL French slash NEMAC related to 2019 real estate tax or parcel number 59281479013. Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. Move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Alder Salzer. Um, can I just get some clarity on the sort of why we're putting the refund back? I, I mean, it looks like item 39, 40, and 41 are both that. Is that our fault or is that a, a system error? Can someone shine some light on that? Thank you. These properties actually um, were part of the assessments from the state of Wisconsin through the manufacturing side of assessments. They take care of all of those. So uh, the company actually went to the state and contested the assessment and the state has an agreement with them that came up with the number that was agreed to. And that is why we have to now refund them. Got it, thank you. Alder Flicky Paneski. Thank you. This is the entire assessment. Do we do we then give portions, percentages of it to our other taxing entities? Finance director. 
Yes, that is correct. These have been submitted to the state in order for us to be allowed to charge back the other taxing jurisdictions for their portions. Thank you. All right, any other discussion on this item? All right, seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. That's approved. Item 41, RC number 108-23-24 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 76-23-24 by older persons Mitchell and Flicky Paneski, authorizing the issuance for a refund for excess property tax payable to J.L. French related to 2020 real estate taxes for parcel number 5928-147013. Let me know if everyone got those numbers. Um, Alder Mitchell. Move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. That's approved. Item number 42, RC number 111-23-24 by the Public Works Committee to whom was referred resolution number 65-23-24 by older persons Decker and Rust authorizing the appropriate city officials to file an application with the United States Department of Transportation for a raise grant to construct a bicycle and pedestrian bridge con connecting South Pier with the riverfront and to execute all documents necessary to accept the grant and its funds. Designated at uh, the aforementioned amount on the agenda of located matching amounts as required by the program. Alder Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Alder Flicky Paneski. <laughs> this is the pedestrian bridge that we've heard so much about over the last X number of years. And the match is 25%, and it goes up to, we're getting up to 5.3 million. So I, I keep thinking about those stoplights. If the bridge construction costs go over 5.3 million, is our city liable for the rest of it? Is that a finance question or a public works question? <coughs> Who wants that, David? That's correct. Uh, actually, the, the project we're anticipating right now is about an $8 million project. So of which the, the balance would be city funds. This is currently resides in a TID district, so we would look at our capital improvements, which will be presented later this evening that the, the funding for this bridge in the future will be coming out of the TID, uh, not general obligation borrowing. So um, we're early in the design process. This is uh, necessary in, o in order for the city to receive the funds uh, in order to start the process. Do you know what TID it's in? Um, I believe it's 16, uh, 17. So, so, can I keep going? So is it, <laughs> Is it the TID that is all of South Pier, or do we have now a new TID? No, this this isn't South Pier. This is the one that runs along. Uh, it's it's along the river. In other words, that we're looking to amend, where the former Mayline site is uh, being proposed to have a, a development on. So we would be, we would be we would be part of that TID. Okay, okay. Now now I'm very confused because the pedestrian bridge goes from South Pier to to the to the shanties on the west side of the river, and Mayline is on the west side of the river further north. This TID is the, the, 
it's eligible because it's within a half mile of this TID. As a public infrastructure project, we're able to expend TID dollars within for public infrastructure within a half mile of it. And that TID has the longest uh, increment of value, in other words, available. So the bridge would be most appropriate to be funded out of that, out of that TID. So in addition to the, the numbers I came up with, 5.3 from the feds, 1.3 for us, and you said 8 point something for the total cost. So we're gonna get another million and a half from a TID. The, the numbers aren't working for me. It would be $8 million is what we're estimating for the total project. 5.3 of the federal dollars is capped. So that 5.3 subtracted from the 8 million would be the city's portion of the funding. And all of that would be funded through the TID in that future borrowing from, for the project. So 2.7 million. I, how about our finance director queued in as well? Yeah, that's good. I'm hoping maybe I can help uh, clear it up and maybe attorney Adams can jump in as well. I believe the requirement of the resolution is that we, um, because the grant of the $5.3 million, we have to guarantee that the city will do the 25%. So anything above that, yes, we would be um, responsible for, but this resolution is a requirement of the grant and making sure that we will do the 25%, not necessarily th anything above what the grant would cover. So, the 25%, it's incumbent upon us to do the 1.3 million to get the 5.3. Correct. But that doesn't speak to the overall cost of the project, which I am now hearing will fall to a tax incremental district. Is that accurate? Yes, that would be the plan. And that project would have to come through the joint review board in order to get approval as well. And this is the same, this, this is the same TID that the Mayline property would be on. Correct. Thank you. All right, Alder Perella. Yes, I had, I had a couple of questions. Uh, uh, some are answered already, just for me to understand in the end. So the 1,335,483 is a 25% of what we will get from the feds if we apply or get this grant, correct? So it just, I don't understand much of the verbiage designating, so what we are approving tonight, that's what I'm concerned with. So that we are voting in addition to execute the documents necessary, blah, 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 and then designating 1,335,483 of local matching, which in this case means exclusively city matching as required by the product, program. That, that's correct. Additional questions, Alder Prello? Yeah, so, and that, if I understood the previous conversation, this money will be, will be coming back as part of those 2.7, which should be from the TID. Okay, thank you. Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I can understand the excitement behind the project. I can understand the value that it could provide. I guess I'm still a bit caught up on a concern that this ends up being more of an expensive, the only word I can think of is boondoggle, so I'm going to go with that, where we have the figures in front of us right now, but a year or two passes, and now we start seeing high dollar figures for different maintenance items in the capital improvements plan that push out other, whether it's residential road repairs or other items that would otherwise be going to. Do we have any comparable structures whether it was in the area or across the country that were looked at for some sort of estimate as to what maintenance and upkeep is on a bridge like this? Yes, and we, 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 we used our current maintenance, for instance, on the A Street Bridge, which is far more complicated and far more expensive to operate than, than this pedestrian bridge. We worked with some of the preliminary concept drawings in the, uh, the the consulting engineer that developed that concept, 
gave us some of the data, in other words, to submit for the grant. Um, there's going to be plenty of opportunity for the council to have input in terms of contracts for, throughout this whole process. So once we start, the next thing would, after, after we would receive the grant, we are solicitating uh, RFPs for consultants right now on the design. When we receive those uh, proposals, we'll be coming back to committee and the council to say, this is the preferred consultant, this is the contract. They will have uh, idea in terms of what the timeline, what the budget is, and there will be opportunities to approve or disapprove throughout this process. So tonight, by approving the grant and obligating the funding, just allows us to start the process of the design and obligating those funds to the city. Even once after we get it designed and we're gonna have preliminary estimates throughout the engineering design, there's gonna be opportunity for public input. Uh, it's part of the grant. We want the community to be involved in this process. We want their input in terms of how the design and how it should function. So throughout this process, there's gonna be opportunity on cost, operations, how is it gonna look, and ultimately, it's gonna be decided upon, is this affordable or not? Uh, but tonight, again, this is a, a formality in terms of trying to get even the money obligated to the city of Sheboygan. We've been awarded the grant, but they haven't given us any money. So in, in order for the city to actually receive it officially, this resolution is needed to submit to the feds for us to, to start that process. Follow up, Alder Mitchell? Just a quick follow up on that then. So if we accept the money tonight and designate the uh, local matching funds, whether that at this point looks like it's going to be TIF, it was said that there will be multiple opportunities to check in and look at the affordability, but I'm assuming we're going to be spending down some of that before we start to hit those opportunities? There, that's, that would be true. There is an opportunity that if, if we get into the preliminary engineering, that that would be, let's say, part of our, our cost up front. But you know, the engineering portion is, is, is some of the lower, lower cost in the beginning of the project before we actually are signing a construction contract and such. So I think, we'll have a pretty good clear picture even during the interview process and the uh, proposal process. If, is this an attainable project within our budget? And I think that's a, that's a fair question that we all need to ask. Uh, Thank you. Alder Flicky-Paneski. Thank you. So let's, let's do a suppose. Suppose that we get the grant, suppose that we match, suppose that the engineering costs and the actual costs are like the light fixtures on the intersections. At what point do we say no thank you to the feds and give them their money back? Is that how it goes? Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's going to be a council decision. And we're, we're going to go into this with, like I said, we have, we, we have a preliminary budget. We're forecasting some figures within the capital improvements tonight, and we've talked about it even within this resolution. And it's going to need to be a community decision. Is this body and the, the council wanting to invest in this structure um, as part of our city infrastructure in our downtown and Riverfront and Lakeshore, Lakeshore District. Um, do, that's gonna be the question, is it's TID eligible, but is this appropriate and a good use of that TID funding? And um, does it really provide you know, all the benefits that have been preliminarily is submitted as part of the grant? So the grant was a re rewarded to the city that this is gonna reduce Vehicle trips, it's gonna provide safe access for pedestrians to cross that section of the Sheboygan River. They won't have to necessarily tra traverse the A Street Bridge all the time to get across. It provides direct access from downtown to the, to the South Pier District and 
vice versa from South Pier to the downtown, creating that vi viable link. So as a, as a overall development and move, movability um, opportunity for residents and visitors within our community, that's, that's gonna be the discussion that this body is gonna have to decide, is it worth the value of that, what, that, what we're proposing? Alder Heidemann. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. So, so we have all this money. What's the time frame? What year are we looking at to be able to walk on the bridge? And is it all? My other question is: Is there ever a possibility that, as you say, the community is supposed to have input in it, where this would actually go to a referendum? Well, it it it, it depends. The only way, if, if I guess, if it would go to a referendum is if uh, the tid 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 money wasn't. Uh, Available. In other words, we had to look for elsewhere and other 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 funding sources. But um, again, that would be a council decision. Okay. And and so when do we get to walk on the bridge? Yeah, the, the schedule is if we we start the design this year in 2024, we're looking to put, hopefully um, as soon as the end of 25, early 26 to start construction, and in 27 it would be completed. Thank you. Okay, I just want some clarification. I'm following up on um, uh, Alder Felicki Paneski's question here. So, if we, so we're approving this money, we're going to move forward with that. We got the match, or we're going to get the funding. Uh, is there a point that we can turn back from this if we realize the cost is too expensive? I know it is a council decision and that we will get public input, but can we turn back from it once we've committed to this today? As long as we don't, if it, it, as long as we get to a point we're not spending any of the federal funds, I would say we could turn it back. But so as soon as we start drawing on their funding, mm -hmm. then it would be a matter of paying back the feds and then turning back the whole grant. Okay. So Alder uh, Flicky Paneski, you have exhausted, per council rules, you've exhausted your to limit q in So with that, I apologize. Um, any additional comments on this item? All right. I guess I'll just make one one little uh, one one just d different commentary too, because um, Director Beeble did hit on it too, and I guess I'll direct my question or my comment to the Redevelopment Authority Chair as well too, and just in terms of uh, some of the input that we've so far gotten on this project in terms of because uh, the Redevelopment Authority owns several parcels over there, and just the amount of attention, positive attention that uh, business developers have brought. Uh, um, in anticipation of this project as well. So just a little commentary on that. So, all right, with that, we'll go into a roll call vote. Eight eyes, one no. Right, that item is approved. Next, RC number 116-23-24 by the Licensing Hearing and Public Safety Committee to whom was referred General Ordinance number 22-23-24 by Alderperson Salazar, amending section 2-115 as to eliminate the need for Alderperson signatures on council documents, revising the deadline for submitting requests for documents to the legal department. Alder Salazar. I move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Alder Heidemann. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm not comfortable with this. And I uh, mentioned it at the committee meeting. Taking a responsibility that we've had for years for aldermen to sign documents, put their name to something, and be responsible for something, and totally just wipe it away. Because what? A computer program can't be made. Uh, it's, it, to me, I think it's taking a step that's very important uh, as and a responsibility of aldermen to have. So again, I'm not gonna be supporting this. Um, I believe it's a responsibility of every alderman to look at their documents, be informed what's happening, and put their John Hancock to something as opposed to just letting it go flying by and everything's good here, nothing to see, 
We'll just get, we'll just let everything roll and and uh, go without any approval from any alderman. Thank you, uh, City Attorney. So uh, what this does is it eliminates the requirement to actually physically sign. It does not remove the fact that you will have alders who sign on to legislation. It is just merely the physical signature uh, that is being removed. All right, Alder Flicky Paneski. Thank you. Um, I agree with Alder Heidemann. Um, this one was difficult for me because it does take away part of what we're here for. We're here to put our names on documents and stand behind what we pass. So, and I understand modern technology can go through it. The other thing that's difficult for me is in this resolution, it is the city attorney who is elected and it is the city clerk who is elected. Those are the only two people that need to sign off on resolutions and I'm just not comfortable with that. Just, and just to, to point out again, you still will be signing onto them. It just will not be a physical signature at the bottom. So all the documents will still have your names at the top. That, that the, only, the only thing that's changing is actually the physical signature at the bottom. So you'll still be signing on to things. You'll, you'll still have the requirement to have a, uh, two sponsors. That kind of thing will still happen. You still have the floor, Alder Flicky Paneski. So, so signing on are those two people who bring resolutions to the floor. Is that what you mean by signing on? Right. So resolutions and ordinances still have alders who, who sign on to them, who have to have their names put on the documents, those names will still be there. It's just that you will no longer be at the council meeting 60 seconds before the council meeting, you won't be putting your signatures on the bottom of them, but you will still have your name on the top of them. And uh, obviously nothing will go on the council agenda with, with your name on it unless you approve of it. All right, uh, we've got a few cues. So, do Decker, Mitchell, Salazar, Heideman. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, the reason that I, you know I support this is our when we vote for something is we are we show our support, and that's how we how we 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 put our name on it. And then I feel that that is sufficient then to have me to sign documents, beginning of every meeting, and I, I think it's just easy. It just it just eases the, the process. All right, Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I had a question, I think it's been answered, so I will instead switch to just thoughts on this one. I'm not particularly comfortable with the change either, unless we look at how we're handling these documents coming forth in general. I've been a committee chair for a little while now, and pretty much everything that is going to my committee will say by older persons, Mitchell and Flicky Paneski. I can't say that I myself by hand written all of those out or seen them before they're on an agenda somewhere. To me, putting my signature on it is that stamp of approval that I actually want to move forward on something. And I think if we're removing that, we really do actually need pre-approval for names to be put to any particular documents coming forward and that is going to create a lot of overhead. So at this time, I will not be supporting this change. Thank you, Alder Mitchell. Alder Salazar. So I just wanted to echo what um, Dean was sharing. There are times where we do sign documents here at council and there are moments where your vote goes against what you've signed. So that opportunity still exists um, and you can read these documents ahead of time which is attached to our agenda. So w they aren't taking them away. I, I would, I highly doubt any of y'all are reading these quite stacked large documents before you're getting here. I understand with the second, you believe that the signature is a stamp of approval, but I believe, and if that's wrong, if uh, Attorney Adams wants to correct me here, but that's your vote. Well, uh, Attorney Adams? Yeah, the names at the top are basically, you're sponsoring it to get it on the floor, but not right. promising to vote for it, right? Thank you. Alder Heideman? Thank you, Mayor. You have five members of a committee. Okay, there's two names of committee members that are on, on the resolution. It goes to committee. Three of the other members of the committee say, we're not supporting this. So that doesn't even come back to the council and would not get a signature. Okay, but what's, what's to prevent now with no signatures 
that 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 resolution would come back to the council anyway. You don't ha you, you you're not responsible for what you uh, uh, what you establish at committee. Attorney Adams, no, that's not correct. I've uh, been incorrect before. I'm sorry. I've been incorrect unco before, so I'm not worried about that. I'm just, the thing that I'm worried about is not signing a document that I'm supporting, or, or, or signing a document I'm supporting, or not signing a, do a document that I wouldn't support. That's, I've done this all my life, so I'm not so, uh, it's not that easy for me to give that responsibility up. Yeah, you, you, will st you will still have the opportunity to have your name put at the top of the document. The policy is, is that nobody's name gets put on the top of a document unless they've approved it. Now, some of the committee chairs have, over time, had a practice that they'll allow their name to come on to any item that's coming to that committee. They don't have to do that. Every document that has an alder's name at the top of it has either their express or implicit approval. They've either expressly approved it or they've indicated their willingness to have their name put on documents of that type. Um, that's how that works. If you don't want your name on it, it's not it's not going on there. Okay. Anyone else on this item? All right. Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Person Ackley. There it is. Okay. Thank you. Six eyes, three no's. All right. That is approved. Next item 44, General Ordinance Number 252324 by Older Person Salazar Feldy, amending the Section 14 1 Weights and Measures item. Uh, Alder Salazar. I ask to suspend the rules. Any objection to suspension? I object. All right, there's been an objection. All those in favor of suspending the rules, state aye. Aye. Any objection? All right, and pending the chairs, the ayes have it. All their cells are, please proceed I with move, your motion. I move to adopt the resolution. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? All right, uh, this is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. That's approved. General Ordinance Number 262324 by Older Person Salazar and Feldy amending Section 12 32 of the Plan, Examination, and Permits Fees Schedule. Ald I ask. Older Salazar. I ask to suspend the rules. I object. All right, there's been an objection. Um, all those in favor of suspending the rules, state aye. Aye. Any objection? Aye. All right, in opinion of the chairs, the ayes have it. Older Salazar, please proceed with your motion. I move to adopt the resolution. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. All right, that's approved. Item 46 will be referred to the Public Works Committee. We've exhausted the agenda for this evening. Alder Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I move to adjourn. <clears throat> Moved and seconded. All those in favor of adjourning, state aye. Aye. All right. We're adjourned at 649, and uh, we'll take a five-minute recess and reconvene as the Committee of the Whole. Mm -hmm.